Hi friends, this is tech expert Neil and you are watching howisol.com. In today's video, I'll show you how to remove viruses from your pen drive. This will be a detailed step-by-step -step video as always and I'll show you how you can erase all the viruses without deleting your data. So we'll be doing this in two steps. The first step, we'll manually clean the virus using a Linux system and I'll show you how to create that Linux system and after manually cleaning it, then we will scan it using a virus scanner on your Windows system. So we'll be very cautious. So if the virus from the infected pen drive cannot get onto your computer and still you'll be able to retrieve the data. So this method is applicable for most of the viruses except for viruses which encrypt the data. So in that case, it will not be possible to retrieve the data without and decrypting the encrypted data so apart from that kind of viruses most common viruses that are shortcut based or uses some script and other payloads like exe files etc all those kinds of viruses can be easily removed using this method 99 percent of the cases you have a virus in your pen drive of this kind so without wasting much time let's get started so first we'll cover the requirements for this entire process you will require obviously the infected pen drive. Apart from that, you'll also need another pen drive using which we'll be booting a Linux system to clean this pen drive manually. So for that, you'll require any pen drive around 8 GB or more in size. And you'll also need a good internet connection to download the Linux distro that we'll be using. It will be around 2 to 3 GB in size. And apart from that, in the second step, we'll be using a virus scanner if you have got an updated windows system with the latest virus definitions so in that case windows defender is quite good enough and it will scan and remove most of the viruses from your pen drive so now let's start with the first method that is installing the linux system onto a flash drive you'll need a flash drive which is around 8 gb or more in size i have already connected it to my system and now we'll download the linux distro so Let's go into my computer and I'll show you how to do that. So we'll open Google and we'll now search for the distro that we'll be installing in our pen drive. The name of the distro is Linux Lite. This is quite small Linux distribution and it's quite easy to use. The interface resembles Windows a lot. So simply type Linux Lite in Google and then you'll see this download page over here. Click on that. By the way, the link I'll provide you down in the video description. Basically, this you can scroll down. Over here, you can see this is the download page. And if you want, then you can donate. But it's not compulsory. You can select $0 over here. And then hit on this download button and your download will start. But what I found is this download link is quite slow. So there's an alternative. We can download this using torrent. And that's quite easy. And it's quite fast. So and it's 100% legal because this is an open source software so we are not doing anything illegal here so to do that we'll go to a website that's name is linux tracker just google search it you will come up so here this is the site linux tracker.org and in here we'll go in torrents and in here in search torrent type in linux light and then hit the search button like this and over here you can see this is the linux distro that we wanted to download so you can see the size is around 2.07 gb in size at the time of the recording the latest version is 6.0 this will change depending on when you access this link to download this one click over here close the ads and you can see over here this is the torrent download link click on this and if you see any ad you can simply click the cross button and then over here you have to click download torrent and your torrent file will get downloaded over here like this so once your torrent file is downloaded you can easily download the linux lite distro which is an iso file now to create the usb drive from this iso file we'll be using a tool called ventoy so again go to google and type ventoy you can see this first link ventoy.net click on this this is a very easy tool to, to create bootable pen drives so we'll simply download the latest version click on downloads and over here you can see it supports windows linux and we'll download the windows version over here 
I've already downloaded this software. So instead of a head to that location. So over here you can see this is the zip file that I downloaded. You can simply, you'll have to simply extract it by right clicking over here and then extract all and you'll get this folder. And in this you have to go inside and open this file ventoy.2disk.exe double click it and grant it the administrative privileges and over here you can see it's already showing that i have already connected a ventoy device but in your case over here you'll see the pen drive which is your blank pen drive mind you not the pen drive that is infected with the virus so this pen drive will be formatting it completely so make sure that you have not got any important data on it or and if you have got take a backup of it because it will be completely erased so you'll select this pen drive and you to install ventoy on it you have to click on the install button over here by clicking on install button it will ask you to confirm whether you want to delete the data just click yes and it will format your pen drive and it will install ventoy on it once Ventoy has been installed, you will see over here Ventoy in device, the version number of it. And you can then open the device like a normal pen drive. It will be named Ventoy over here. You can see this is the name. And you have to simply copy the ISO file from the downloaded file, from the torrent file that we downloaded. And this is around 2.06 GB. So this is the Linux Lite ISO file. You have to simply copy paste it on the pen drive once Ventoy has been installed on it. So now that's how easy to create a bootable Linux pen drive using Ventoy. Now using this pen drive, we'll be booting your system in Linux and then we'll connect the infected pen drive to manually check what all files have been infected and how to delete it. So I'll be booting Linux Lite into a virtual machine so that I can record it. And in your case to boot a Linux pen drive, you'll need to make sure that you have disabled secure boot in your BIOS and you know the boot key using which you can select the pen drive. If you are not aware of this, how to do this, you can Google search the name of your motherboard. And if you are doing this in a desktop system, then you have to type the motherboard name. If you are doing it in your laptop, then type the laptop model number. If you are not aware of what is the exact model number or your motherboard name, just go on run and type system information and over here you will see the baseboard product name this is your motherboard name in case your laptop then the model number will be mentioned over here system model so in my case this is a desktop system this is a b450 tomahawk max so once you get that information just type in google search it b450 tomahawk max this is an msi board msi and we first need to know about the boot key so simply type the name of the motherboard or laptop and then type the keyword boot key and you can see in my case it is f11 in your case it can be anything different system manufacturers have different keys this key has to be pressed as soon as your system boots up that is when you power the system on when you see that logo at that particular time you have to press this particular key so to ensure that we get that key pressed at the correct time you have to keep pressing uh, this particular key when the system starts booting up so repeatedly keep pressing the particular key in my case it will be f11 and eventually your boot menu will come up if your system has got secure boot enabled then you have to disable it to do that again you have to type the motherboard name and instead of boot key just type secure boot disable yeah disable secure boot and then you will see how to go into your BIOS settings and then disable a secure boot. So with these two settings changed, now you can boot into your Linux system using that pen drive by repeatedly tapping on the boot key and selecting the pen drive from the boot options. In my case, I'll show you how I'll do it in a virtual machine. So I'll open virtual box. Okay, I'll now open the system by clicking on the start button over here. And you can see as soon as the system boots up, you can see F12 to select the boot device. Once I press the F12 key, you can see this is listing me all the boot devices that it has detected. I'll be booting using a CD-ROM. So we'll click, so we'll select C. And here we go. This is a Linux Lite boot menu. You have to select this first option. So using your arrow key, just select boot Linux Lite 6.0 live system and then hit enter. It will take some time to boot up depending on your system configuration. 
Okay friends, the Linux Lite system is booted up and now we will start the manual cleaning of the pen drive. So once the system has booted into the desktop, you can now connect the pen drive. You will be greeted with this welcome menu. You can simply close this by clicking on the cross button over here. And once you connect the pen drive, you will see over here the pen drive will be listed. I will connect it right now and you will see. And over here you can see the pen drive has been connected over here and it's going as Neil and this is the pen drive and in this at present there's no there are no viruses but i'll show you what exactly you're looking for so basically a windows virus that is transmitted via pen drive will have some particular characteristics like it will have a shortcut files before we look at that make sure you go into view and then select show hidden files because sometimes the files the virus files are marked hidden to prevent deletion so make sure this is show hidden file has been enabled okay so the types of files we are talking about there are different kinds of viruses some file types i'll show you what kind of file you can expect some files are like named start with folder name and then lnk or any file name lnk lnk file is basically a link file or shortcut file in windows in Linux it does not have any meaning so it will be shown as this lnk file so if you see lnk files in your pen drive simply delete them because as such you will not be deleting any data it can be very safe to delete them and you will not lose any data apart from lnk file there will also be some exe files if you find some exe file that you are not aware of or you think are malicious you can simply delete them file name of the exe file can be anything one of the most popular viruses name was i love you virus so it will be named like this and it can also be named in doc format so if you find some documents that you do not think are yours like a file name which is looking suspicious to you you can delete them and apart from this file types you can also find viruses with file names like vbs so anything suspicious naming file vbs this is basically visual basic script it's a script file and this these are the various ways in which viruses try to execute themselves and basically spread in your system so all these file types are suspicious if you are not aware of what these particular files are doing and you think that you have not placed them in your pen drive then it most likely is being spread by a virus so this files can be deleted apart from this the most common file names are autorun.inf files this also you can safely delete this allows the virus to execute itself automatically as soon as you connect the pen drive with the system if your particular if your system has got a setting in which it allows to auto run the pen drive files then this particular file will tell which particular exe file or any executable file has to be called as soon as you connect the pen drive using this file the virus has spread quite easily from one system to the other without even clicking the pen drive Apart from this, you can also find some file types like bat files. .bat. This is also quite suspicious and you can delete them. And recently when I found virus in my pen drive, what I found was this suspicious folder path. Basically, the folder name was blank. And in Linux, it doesn't allow me to create a blank folder, but the folder name was not present in that particular pen drive. And when I went inside the particular folder, over here I found the files that I actually had on the pen drive. So basically I had to recover these files with, before deleting this directory. This directory path was like continuously going one step inside the other. This is basically to hide the main executable file. So you have to go through each and every blank directories. And over here the virus was present. After two or three blank directories, I found the virus and I deleted them and so this is a new technique for virus to hide themselves so these are basic ways of hiding in plain sight if your file itself has been infected then you will have to take help from the uh, virus scanner which will be our second step but but if your virus files are separately present on your pen drive then you can use this manual method of identifying them and deleting them so once you have gone through the each and every file and you have identified these suspicious files and removed it from the pen drive make sure that you also ensure that your data is not been deleted accidentally you can 
like I mentioned over here, in this case, the virus had shifted my actual files from the original directory to a, a dummy directory. And then I had to recover them from the dummy directory by copying them back. If that has happened in your case, then you will have to also do that. So now after doing all this, you can now uh, close the system. The purpose for the Linux system is to ensure that the virus that was present on your pen drive does not get executed and spread because most of the viruses at present only spread in Windows system because of the popularity of the system. There are some viruses that run on Linux, but in 99% in of the cases, your pen drive will not be infected with a Linux virus. So you can safely open it on a live system. So even if it, that it has got some Linux virus, it will not affect your system because it's a live system, which is not interacting with your current system. So once you have done all these steps, now we'll head to the second stage of this cleaning process. That is using your Windows system, we'll now clean the virus completely from your pen drive. So to do that, now we'll head back to our Windows system. Okay, so in your Windows system, simply go on search, type in autoplay and you will see this autoplay settings in Windows 10. This kind of option will be there in Windows 11 also there it will be present. So in system settings, there will be an autoplay setting. In this, you have to make sure that first of all, this use autoplay for all media and devices is selected as on. And you can see over here in removable drive, make sure that take no action is selected. There are different options present in most. The default option is to open folder to view in file explorer or something like that. Make sure it's selected as take no action. This will ensure that as soon as you connect the pen drive, the windows does not automatically open the pen drive. In case we have skipped some viruses in the first step of cleaning, this will ensure that we are not allowing the virus to run on your windows system. Once the setting has been made, now you can connect the infected pen drive to your system and we'll now run the uh, virus scanner on your pen drive to do that simply open this pc go to the pen drive which is my case is this neil k drive right click on it and then over here select scan with microsoft defender if you have got another virus scanner then you can scan it with that too i recommend using only the microsoft defender click on scan with microsoft defender and it will do a quick scan and if you have skipped any viruses, then this particular scan will completely eradicate all those skipped viruses. And you can then select if there is a threat detected, you can then select what you want like to do with it. Normally it will quarantine it or if you want to straight away delete it, you can also do that. Like in my case, I'll show you this was the file. This was the file name type that was created by the virus. And this is some weird file name so this was deleted by I said I had selected to delete this particular virus so after doing these two steps you can safely use the pen drive and you can extract the data from it without any fear of virus infection I hope friends you like this video if yes smack that like button share this video with your friends and family and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel howisol.com we have got lots of content coming soon so make sure to hit that bell icon to get notified as soon as we upload a new video thanks for watching friends this is neil signing off see ya bye bye